Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to solve the FizzBuzz challenge using Python. And if you haven't heard of the FizzBuzz challenge, there is a article on Wikipedia that tells you all about it. And I have heard that this is used from time to time as a starter question in job interviews. Okay? So, the FizzBuzz challenge is as follows, and this is kind of the pseudocode for it as well. You want to loop through 100 numbers, and if, as you loop through those numbers, any of the numbers are divisible by 5 and 3, you want to print out FizzBuzz. If they are divisible by 3 only, you want to print out Fizz. If they're divisible by 5 only, you want to print out Buzz, and they don't fall into any of these categories, you just want to print out the number itself. Okay? So we're going to type out the code here and I'll tell you what I'm doing, but then I'll really explain it and how it works after it's typed out. Okay? So let's start with a loop, a for loop. So we're going to type for i in a range of 1 to 100 and 1, and that's up to 101, but not including 101. And we'll show you exactly what that does when we print this out. Now we start our if statements. If i modulus 5 equals 0, and i modulus 3 equals 0, print fizzbuzz. Okay, now we move on to our next criteria, which is divisible by 3. If i modulus 3 equals 0, print fizz. And right here, this actually needs to be else if, okay? Con continuing on, another else if, i modulus, in this case it's 5, we're going to print buzz, equals 0, print buzz. And here's our kind of a catch-all, we can just do an else, print I. Okay, so now let's kind of go over this code. So this is the for loop, or a loop, called a for loop, and you can think of this I as iterating through this range. So you just say for I to iterate in or through the range of starting at 1, up to, but not including 101, and then if as you iterate through using the modulus, and the modulus, sometimes called the modulo, finds the remainder after division. If using the modulus after the division using 5, you have no remainder equals 0. That's what that means, no remainder. And i modulus 3 returns no remainder, then print fizzbuzz. And in our pseudocode, we said if divisible by, that's a good way to describe it, but you can also kind of think of this as if uh, a multiple of also, whichever makes more sense to you. Okay, continuing. So this first one was an if, and then if you have another else if with criteria, then you type out L if. I modulus 3 returns no remainder, print fizz. Another else if I Again, that, remember the i is just iterating through that range. Modulus 5 equals 0, print buzz. So let's check this against our pseudocode. So the first one was 5 and 3, fizz buzz. 5 and 3, fizz buzz. 3, 3, fizz. And 5, buzz. Okay, so that looks good. And then anything else that doesn't fit that criteria, you just want to print the number itself. So now let's go ahead and try and print this over here in our IPython console. 
and see what we get. Now the first thing I want to check is if it started at 1 and went to 100. Okay, so we're down here at the bottom of the list. Let's start there. We have 98, fizz would be 99, and buzz would be 100. That looks good. Let's go up to the top. And it does look at, like it started at 1. Okay? So whenever you're doing your ranges and it doesn't give you exactly what you want, you just want to mess with that range until it gives you exactly what you want. So that is just an example of one way you can solve the fizz buzz challenge. And there's one more thing we need to do, and this is actually pretty important. Let's copy this code here and paste it down here, and let's comment out this code here just for a minute. Okay, and notice over here in our output where the fizz buzzes are. They're at multiples of 15, so you can see fizz buzz at 15, 30. 45, 60, 75, and 90. Okay, so just make a mental note of that. And what we want to do is show you how the order of your if-else statements matter. So let's take that first if statement and put it down here. Let's change that into an else if statement and change that first one back into an if statement. And let's clear this console and run this and see what we get. Now at first you might think, oh well it worked, but if you look closer you notice it actually did not work. Because anywhere where there was a fizz buzz, there's now a fizz. So let's explore that a little bit. So what's happening here is as these if-else statements are running through this loop, they start with this first one and they ask the question, are any of these numbers indicated by the iteration of this letter I, are any of these numbers evenly divisible by 3? And if they are, then they print fizz. And then they ask the question, are any of these numbers evenly divisible by 5, as it iterates through the for loop? And if it is, it prints buzz. And once it gets down here, it's already answered these questions. Even though technically some of those numbers might have been and, and actually are divisible by 5 and 3, it's already put a 3 in those places. So it's not going to come back up and replace those to correct um, what you think that code should be doing. So in a sense, anything that was a fizz buzz, it's already got a fizz in it because it came here first and it said, is it divisible by 3? And yes, it is divisible by 3, even though it's technically divisible by 3 and 5. It's already going to fill those numbers in. It's going to do it kind of in a step 1, step 2 type fashion. And by the time it gets down here, it's already filled in, so it's not going to do anything else. It basically stops, and it doesn't even consider this criteria with the 5 and the 3. Okay? So that's just something we needed to point out, and it can be important. And it can, as you can see, affect your outputs. So let's delete this code because it doesn't work. And let's go ahead and uncomment our original code. And let's print this out because we want to get our fizz buzzes back. And you can see now they're back. Okay? And they are where they should be. They're at the increments of 15. So that is it for this tutorial. We'll be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.